Shalom. This is Atlantic Beach. Further, further north. Like it's bluer and clearer away from Nivis. So we can get this. Look at that out there. Wow. There are many tourists. Units. <coughs> it's awesome, right? Beautiful, beautiful day. Awesome, awesome place. All right, Shalom again. I'm in a completely different, different part of the beach. This is the way, way north end. You can see, got some interesting type of island deal going on over there. And over here, you got some nice dunes. It really is just an opportunity to look and see Man, the most high man is awesome out of sight you know there's no you you won't find too many things on the planet that are exactly the same not no two beaches no you know your two ears are not exactly the same your two hands are different you know the extreme complexity of your how about shimmy how shot is unmatched that's, that's really what i'm trying to say extreme complexity all right and I'll do something you know with this footage we'll get subscriptions and just go into that all right the first author of beauty is the almighty and how by Hashem be how shine I'm sure you can feel that you can hear that wind now and way back out on the sea way back there It was a paradise before the wicked came and defiled it. With all this killing and bloodshed and murder. Right? Well, that the scriptures say, power was given unto him to take peace from the earth. But the earth will return to its pristine glory. It will return to its paradise once again, once he's out of the way. And what a great time that's going to be, right? All right, Shalom, all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. This lesson is entitled, Yes, There Is a God, Extreme Complexity. As you heard me mention in one of the, um, in one of the videos, one of the short videos showing you, and I, you know, since coming into the truth, you know, I look at everything different now. As you brothers and sisters out there might and the further we go along in the faith you know not that you could really understand it but you will start you're seeing things in a different light it's what i like to call your new eyes when you wake up to the truth and the most high you know has you understanding some of his ways you know as you understand the scriptures and you grow in your knowledge you start to see things in a different light how complex how wonderful how beautiful you know how magnificent his creation is you know and how 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 um i don't know you run out of words you run out of words to describe the awe of the heavenly father but we know that he exists through things that he's made now let's start the scriptures with first let's get a definition this word complexity complexity it says the state or quality of being intricate or complicated the most high is very intricate very complicated you can see it and when we and i went to the second video it had me to thinking as you look at the different beaches and this is all in the same area and i've noticed since living here over the last i guess three years that no two beaches are the same they have a different look a different feel a different vibration you know which also i've been noticing you know over the years too that no two things are exactly the same. How can something be the same yet not the same? You know, extremely wonderfully made, very intricate. And let's, and let's actually 
Let's look up that word intricate. It says the, the state or quality of being intricate. It's a lot here. Or complicated. Let's see if one of the words is intricate. Well, you know, as it, it uh, gives alternate words, complication, problem, difficulty. Intricacy is one of them. It says here. Intricacy. The quality of being intricate. Now, let's try to go a little further with that. Intricate here. <clears throat> And I mean, everything is made with excellence and beauty. And you couldn't even begin to explain it. Look up intricate. See what it says. It says complex, very complicated or detailed. And yet it seems so simple. When you look at the birds, no two birds are the same. How many different species? It says a factor involved in a complicated process or situation. What does complexity mean? The quality or state of being not simple the quality or state of being complex. You see, a part of something that is complicated or hard to understand. And it's like that when you look in at the creation and when you take another word and you say extreme, extremely, then you know it's just, you times it a thousand. It's extremely complicated. Now this also reminded me of this scripture. Romans 11 and verse 33 says, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Most High. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. And when you look up this word unsearchable, as we've done before on many occasions, but I felt like, you know, the other day when I was off, I was able to actually just go and breathe and walk and look. And man, I mean, you just see something different every time. Strong's G419. Anexe Raunitas. Anexe Raunitas. Anexe Raunitas for unsearchable. And it says that cannot be searched out. The most high ways can't be searched out. He's too high. He's, he's the almighty. He's too above our understanding. Not searched out. Inscrutable, unsearchable. And let's see what this word inscrutable says here. You can get it there. Yeah. Inscrutable. En enigmatic. Mysterious. Impossible to understand or interpret, and that's that's Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, right? Very mysterious, e enigmatic, not readily investigated, interpreted, or understood. Mysterious, and when you want, let's go here to e enigmatic, enigmatic, unreadable, impenetrable, mysterious, impossible to interpret, cryptic, un unexpressive, inexpressive, right? Uh, definition two, mysterious, inexplicable, unexplainable, incomprehensible, beyond comprehension. And that's our father, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. His ways are way past finding out. He's unsearchable. How unsearchable are his works? Now, also, when you look at creation and the beauty of it and the awe, you know, and everything that comes with it, you know that also his son had a hand in it. As well as the first fruits, the elect, you know, the 144,000. They were back there with Yahweh Shai and they had a hand in creation. Let's read a little bit about that. This is um, 1 John, I'm sorry, John 1 and 1. It says the deity of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. And look at it, it goes back. What's the precept? Genesis 1 and 1. Genesis 2 and 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with the Most High. And the Word was, I'm sorry, the word was with power and the word was power. The same was in the beginning with power. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Now we know that the savior himself is not the almighty, right? We know that they're two separate beings, but he was there in the beginning with him because he was what? The first created spirit. Let's prove that. Um, the beginning. Because if any Christians stumble across this, they'll get all messed up. Thinking that the beginning of the. Thinking that the Heavenly Father and the Savior is the same being, but they're not. It said right here, this is our Revelation 3.14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of the Most High. So the Savior, how shall was the first created being let's also go to uh let's go to daniel and let's prove that further 
All right, it's going to give you two separate individuals. This is uh, Daniel 7 and verse 13. It says, I saw in the night visions, behold, one like the Son of Man. Who was the Son of Man? That's the Savior, Yahweh Shai. Right? One like unto the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, the chariots, and came to the Ancient of Days. The Heavenly Father is known as the Ancient of Days. He has no beginning nor end. Is not the Savior known as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end? Sure he is, but the Ancient of Days has no end and no beginning. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. So the chariots brought the Savior to the Heavenly Father, and he was near before him. So there are two separate beings in which the Savior had a hand in creating all things. Now this right here is Hebrews 1 verse 1. It says the Most High's final word in his son. And it goes back to John 1 and 1, what we just read. It says here, the Most High who had sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. We know that the Most High speaks through his prophets. Another intricate, complicated thing that people can't get yet, though it's very simple as well. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he appointed, whom he hath appointed, heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. You see it? So the detailed, intricate, complicated, extremely complicated process, right? The extreme complexity of the earth and the elements and all that is that you see before you, the Savior had a hand in it. You see? It's the Heavenly Father's ultimate plan, but the Savior was the one that ought to, you know, that basically uh, put it into effect, which is wonderfully, what's the word we're using? Uh, extreme complexity. Just to give it a simple phrase, extreme complexity, man. Right? And these people want you to believe that some damn Big Bang Theory. How in the hell did two things, two rocks, two meteors collide together and then all of a sudden... The ocean just appeared. The whole earth and everything that's on it just appeared, right? I was meditating on that today, how stupid that is. All these creatures and an a, a ocean that spans the whole globe, which are seven different seas all together, you know, main ones, right? And they all run together and it's filled with thousands upon thousands of different aquatic life. That's just in the sea world alone. There's so many things you haven't seen that, that exist out there that you don't know about that are there, such as the Amazon rainforest, right? Uh, uh, the wilderness over in Africa and other parts of the world, different types of creatures, mammals, reptilians, reptiles, uh, amphibians, aquatic life, you know, birds of the air, animals on the ground, different individuals, different people, all different tongues, nations, different hair textures, eyes, all that. You can't even begin to even explain it because it can't be explained. When I look at the sea and I think about it, I think about this scripture too. This is Jeremiah 5 verse 20. Declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah saying, Hear now this, O foolish people and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will you not tremble at my presence and, and this message is to the foolish Israelites? You got a lot of our people walking around on the earth just blinded, man. But you've been around these devils too long. And these other nations, you need to come back to your, to your extreme, extremely complex father, man. Because he got something way better for us. But you can't experience it because he got you blocked out. And the more we grow in this truth, the more we see. And we're amazed at his wonders. Fear ye not me saith the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, fear ye not, fear, or will ye not tremble at my presence? What did ye do? Which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. But this people had the revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. And this scripture right here, Many brothers, when they come down and they visit and they are taken by the, even if you've been, if you've been to the beach before, I've been to the beach many times as a kid. It never struck me the way it has 
being in the truth and looking at it. Look at that. That's absolutely amazing. And nobody can, can lay a claim to it and say that they did it. They made it. They had a hand in it. Nobody can say that. You can't even look at that and say, oh, well, there's no God. You're out of your mind. You are crazy. Yes, there is a God. Okay? And his name is Yahweh. And his son's name is Yahweh Shai. So our people are revolting and gone. And when you look at, you know, every brother that comes visit and then they make a video, they'll go to Jeremiah chapter 5. Let's also go to, to back that up, 2nd Esdras. And as the scripture said, he made the sand of the sea by a perpetual decree. And he set these uh, ordinances in motion. That water can't come on onto the shore. Neither can the shore go and overtake the water. The skies can't come down and take over the trees. The trees can't go up and take over the sky. Everything is set in its place. The seasons come without end every year. Perfectly. I was riding today. Most people think that spring is the beginning of summer. No. Spring is its own season. Even though the weather's broken, it's not freezing. It is a little bit chilly sometimes, right? And then when the summer comes, it's humid. It's a complete, it's completely different. Although similar, but very different. No two things are the same of the Heavenly Father's and his all of his creation, man. No two things. Your two ears ain't even the same, as I said in the video. But what is that? That's extreme complexity. The Almighty. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 4. In verse, I'm going to just jump in here at verse 11. You can go and read this chapter. It says, how should thy vessel then be able to comprehend the weight of the highest? And the world being now outwardly corrupted to understand the corruption that is evident in my sight. Then said I unto him, it were better that we were not at all than that we should live still in wickedness and to suffer and not to know wherefore. He answered me and said, I went into a forest, into a plain, and the trees took counsel and said, Come, let us go and make war against the sea, that it may depart away before us and that we may make us more woods. The floods of the sea also in like manner took counsel and said, Come, let us go up and subdue the woods of the plain, that there also we may make us another country. The thought of the wood was in vain, for the fire came and consumed it. The thought of the floods of the sea came likewise to naught, for the sand stood up and stopped them. If thou wert judged now betwixt these two, whom wouldst thou begin to justify, or whom wouldst thou condemn? I answered and said, Verily it is a foolish thought that they both have devised, for the ground is given unto the wood, and the sea also hath his place to bear his floods. Then answered he me and said, Thou hast given a right judgment, but why judgest thou not thyself also? For like as the ground is given unto the wood and the sea to his floods, even so they that dwell upon the earth may understand nothing but that which is upon the earth. And he that dwelleth above the heavens may only understand the things that are above the, the height of the heavens. You see? So the Most High basically was saying here, look, everything is set in a place. It's by his decree. It's by his power that these things exist in are the way that they are right the perfect seasons let's also grab let's go to romans 1 which is a beautiful scripture i love reading that in second address chapter 4 here it says romans 1 verse 18 the header says unbelief and its consequences for the wrath of the most high is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of the Most High is manifest in them, for the Most High has showed it unto them. Right? He then showed us all types of things. We can see it every day around us. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. No one will have an excuse. And on top of that, the Most High sent forth his prophecy prophets to prophesy and tell you of these things to tell you that there is a god there is a son of god there is an afterlife there's a there's something else after this this is not you know uh well how's the scripture go uh this is not the end where much glory doth abide 
there is an immortality coming and we're trying to be a part of that right lord willing and the reason that most people on the earth can't understand this truth is too complex for them is because the heavenly father didn't bother to just you know put it into your brain he didn't allow you to have it this is something that he kept a treasure that he's only going to give to his elect to his chosen that's it and lord willing i'll be of that of those chosen and you out there will be of the chosen if you israelites because that when they knew the most high verse 21 they glorified him not as the most high neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened such as and this is really dealing with israelites but we'll apply it to just the people of the world in general you know because they're the same way right they, they don't know the most how they see his ways but they're not thankful because it's not in them it says professing themselves to be wise they became fools and that's the people on the planet for the majority especially these damn edomites they have no idea man they just walking walking on in their iniquity this is a uh, wisdom of solomon chapter 13 verse 1 it says surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the most high and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master and we just got finished talking about it the stupid people on the earth you foolish mortals you puny flesh creatures you don't know what's going on man you got a nerve to doubt the existence of the almighty I got to read that again. It says, neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the workmaster, but deem either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world, whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods, let them know how much better the Lord of them is. For the first author of beauty hath created them. He was the one that did it. There's somebody behind all of these magnificent works, right? A storm, a weather system going going from, you know, place to place, depositing different types of weather patterns in every location. A tornado over here, a water spout over here, hailstones coming out, rain, lightning, thunder, another place, volcanoes, earthquakes, tsunamis. Who is it that's doing all that? It ain't mother nature and it ain't no fucking karma okay it's the almighty doing it man in control of everything and in control of everybody his ways are unsearchable and past finding out extreme complexity and you don't you on too low of a vibration you low vibrational beings and we can't even get mad at you because that's what your lot is you will put on the low end you're the low end theory like the tribe called quest that's you with whose beauty if they being delighted took them to be gods let them know how much better the lord of them is for the first author of beauty hath created them another title the first author of beauty but if they were astonished at their power and virtue let them understood let them understand by them how much mightier he is that made them for by the greatness and beauty of the creatures proportionably the maker of them is seen Woo. getting down getting down man this chapter give you chills and that's the almighty you know and these people on the earth they're really stupid these scientists and these all these people that think they're so intelligent you ain't intelligent you just been given a, a prideful mind and you've been given whatever you think you know the heavenly father gave you that the nuclear scientist that's the most highest a uh, plan that you're using to make nuclear missiles to split atoms to destroy. Did you know that his el the, the elements that you used to make that belong to him? Did you know that? You see? People don't know what's going on, man. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 1. I'm going to jump in here verse 2. It says, Who can number the sand of the sea and the drops of rain? In the days of eternity. Let's stop right there. Can anybody number the sand of the sea? No. He can. And the drops of rain? Again. Only him. In the days of eternity? Nope. Yet not again. Who can find out the height of heaven? And the breadth of the earth? And the deep and wisdom? Wisdom hath been created before all things. 
and the understanding of prudence from everlasting. The word of the Most High, the word of God Most High, is a fountain of wisdom, and her ways are everlasting commandments. To whom hath the root of wisdom been revealed, or who hath known her wise counsels? Unto whom hath the knowledge of wisdom been made manifest, and who hath understood her great experience? There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon his throne. Let's read that again. As soon as it's ready here. I'm trying to get it to all. Uh, yeah, there it is. There is one wise and greatly to be feared, the Lord sitting upon his throne, controlling all things, the good as well as the evil. Right? Doing it all. Doing it big. That's the that's the Almighty, the big daddy, man. And I don't mean the, no disrespect by calling him that. But he is known as the Heavenly Father. And he is the big daddy, all right? Of all, hey, ain't nobody, you know, them other guys, they're nothing. They don't exist. They don't exist. They're even, not even worth mentioning. Their names go on shit paper. They're nothing. And all their houses will be a dung hill, man. Coming up, when the Lord, when his son comes, he's going, we're going to take down all the nations and all your false gods and idols. They're going to be an outhouse. Their, their house is going to be outhouse. It's going to be a shit house, man. It's going to be a place we go to relieve ourselves. That's where it's going to be. Not that we would do that, but that's what it's going to be, though. It's going to be a bathroom at a fast food restaurant. That's what it's going to be, like that. This is Ecclesiasticus. I'm sorry, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5. <laughs> These people are assholes, man. And I think, uh, let's see, Wisdom of Solomon 5. Really, this whole chapter is great to read. I'm, gonna I'm not going to read it. That might be one I included that I didn't need to include. I'm going to read Job chapter 38, and then we're going to read a little bit of 40, and that's going to be it. We're going to read a little bit of this. And it goes, what's the precept? It goes back to Genesis 1 and 10. You see it right here. Genesis 1 and 10. Going back to, you know, to that magnificent creation it says power speaks now to job then the lord or your oil the most high speaks now to job then the lord yahweh by hashem yahweh shai answered job out of the whirlwind and said who is this that darkened the counsel by words without knowledge gird up now thy loins like a man for i will demand of thee and answer thou me when the most high started asking questions and inquiring you won't be able to answer because you don't have the knowledge. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who had laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who has shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud, the garment thereof, and thick darkness, a swaddling band for it, and break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thou shall thy proud waves be stayed. Just like we brought out in Jeremiah chapter 5. The Most High is doing it. He's telling you right there. He was the one that made, did, did the creation, man. It's his plan. Even though Yahweh Shine the angels did it, it's his plan. It's his blueprint. He's the almighty. You stupid Christians keep wanting to say that your white Jesus, right? And his father are the same being. But that's because you have limited knowledge. You're dunces. You're on, like I said, you're on the low end of, of, of evolution. You know? Which the evolution is his. You're the on the low end of creation, excuse me. Which creation has evolved, but not in the way that you devil said it, the big, the big bang theory. Give me a break. Give me a break. You have no idea. And in the next life, you people are gonna be slaves. You're wicked. And you tried to ruin, you tried to ruin the planet he created, and you still can't do it. This planet is gonna be here long after you gone. Even when you come back in your next life, you're gonna be slaves. You're gonna be working on the same planet that's never going to end. It's, it's hey, it's exquisite in its creation. It's everlasting. This planet is immortal. It's never gonna die. It's only gonna be recreated in and beauty without your wicked ass you can't do nothing about it you devils you can't do nothing about it you think taking down some videos is gonna stop the power of the almighty 
As it says right here, God's mighty power. Job 38 and 12, has thou commanded the morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know his place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it? It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment. And from the wicked, their light is withholding, and the high arm shall be broken. I just said it. The wicked is the light is withholding from them. They can't get the truth. You got dumb niggas saying that all nations can be saved. The wicked can't get the light. They wasn't created for that. And their high arm shall be broken. They're going to be out of power. Has thou entered into the springs of the sea? Or hast thou walked in the search of the depth? Have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Has thou perceived the breath of the earth? Declare if thou knowest it, knowest it at all. And the Most High is saying, look, have you seen, has the gates of death been opened unto you? He controlled death and life, man. I don't know if many of you out there have um, meditated on it, but it's got to be an awesome event. Even when you die, you go up and you see the Almighty in his glory. Man, where is the way where light dwelleth? And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? That thou shouldest take it to the bound thereof, and that thou shouldest know the path to the house thereof. Knowest thou it because thou was then born? Or because the number of thy days is great? See, he can say that because he has no beginning, no end. He just is. He exists. Has thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or has thou seen the treasures of the hell? Right. And the, and the Lord just got the snow. He, he just know where everything is. You don't know what the snow is. See, he saw try to explain it. See, when these weather patterns occur and it gets cold out and then it rains, you don't shut up. The most I got the snow and the rain stored someplace and you have no idea. Just say you don't know. You wicked. Has thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or has thou seen the treasuries of the hell, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? He's telling you right there. He got things on. on. He got plans. That's why the old saying goes. If you want to make the most high laugh, tell him what you got planned. Read Job, the 38th chapter. And this is a little bit more. We'll read a little more here. This is Job, chapter 40. It says, Job, what can I say? Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Who shall he that contemneth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth the most high, let him answer it. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to tell the most high what to do. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yeah, twice, but I will proceed no further. You see? And the Most High, he's going he's gonna to go, go into it a little more here. It says, The Most High questions Job, verse 6. Then answered the Lord unto Job, Out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man, I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Answer my questions. Will thou also disannul my judgment? Will thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Woo! You gonna condemn me so you can be righteous? God is good all the time. No, we tell you that's not even a true statement, but he's righteous all the time. Hast thou an arm like power? And or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency. And array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold every one that is proud, and abase him. He said, If you all that, find the proud people and bring them low, if you can do that. Look on every one that is proud and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together and bind their faces in secret. Then I will also confess unto thee that thou, that thine own, right hand can save thee and that's, and that's the whole point nobody can save yourself you need a savior and the savior with all the power that he's been given from the almighty there's more power above him <laughs> yeah man this place is toast babylon the great is finished the almighty is in full control of everything going on yes there is a god and he has extreme complexity I enjoyed doing this lesson. And the water, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, for giving me the spirit to do it. All praise to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. 
and double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us the truth through the Spirit. See you again soon with another lesson, Lord willing. Shalom.